Last week we collected $100,000 cash and in this video I'm going to break down exactly how we did it so that way you can do the same thing as well. So I'm going to dive deep into the foundations that you need in order to actually set yourself up to have $100,000 weeks. The main takeaways that I learned from being in the trenches and getting after it and making it happen and how we're going to be moving forward and kind of learning from this experience to be able to replicate that and do it again. So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly kind of like what we're doing to set ourselves up for that. So that way you can do that for yourself as well. Learn from our mistakes and our lessons because we learned a lot of hard lessons over the last week and it's going to help you out a lot. And then also kind of just how to use any cash and capital that you get in your business kind of redeploying that to make it replicate even further to help you make even more. So if you don't already know who I am, uh, my name is Jeremy and I help entrepreneurs start and scale online consulting companies. Uh, I work with Trey Cockrum, Brandon Forbes and Matt Robinson. There's four of us on the team. We did a hundred thousand cash collected in a week last week. So that said, let's get into it. I don't want to waste you guys time. I don't want to waste mine either. So let's do it. So, it's gonna be a long one, it's gonna be a good one. I'm gonna go in depth, yet I'm gonna make this as valuable as it can for you, so let's get it. Um, the foundations, how do you actually set yourself up to do this? Well, I'm gonna break down our offer, kind of what we're doing, our marketing process on how we're actually like making this happen, and then also our sales process as well. Um, those are kind of the three core components that you need in order to actually like scale a company, especially like an online consulting company or coaching business. Um, so I'm gonna break down each one of those three right now for you, um, and then you can take that and kind of apply it for yourself. So the offer, the <laughs> it kind of goes without saying, like have a damn good offer that gets your clients incredible results. You know, that's like the most important part. You know, it's so like do good work, be good at what you do. And if you suck at it right now, if you don't have good results, like work your ass off until you do. Like learn skills, keep studying, always remain a student and like build systems to be able to support your growth and your client success as well. So that is a kind of the, the preface here. Um, having a really good offer helps with selling it too. And what I mean by that is the, the, these three components are very like correlated to each other and interrelated because having a good offer, the better your offer is, the better results your clients get as well. And the better results your clients get, you use that in your marketing to book even more sales calls, and then you make more sales because A, you have more volume of calls, but then B, the calls are already, like they already know, like, and trust you because they've seen the results you can get, and they're gonna be more likely to buy from you because like success attracts like success as well. And then the more sales you make, the more clients that you send through your offer and your program, and you get the better results, and this is a virtuous cycle that keeps repeating. So nonetheless, that's uh, kind of the, the main part there. Um, and with that said, like our offer is pretty much helping people with their offer, their marketing and their sales and a lot of mindset stuff too. Um, so that kind of gives you a bit of an insight into kind of like what we do and what that would look like. Um, but the damn good offer is also like, there's, there's kind of two components to that, right? So there's like, there's gonna be the front end and then there's gonna be the back end. So the front end is like how you position it. So positioning is extremely important, especially if you're in an industry like this where it's like fairly commoditized and there's a lot of other people doing something similar. So for example, like e-com agencies or even just the agency space in general, right? Like you, you, if you're kind of doing that or maybe you're like a business coach or something like that, you've probably been asked, okay, well, what makes you any different than anybody else, right? And when you get that question, that tells me that your position is a commodity and that nobody actually like sees you as like an authority, an expert and kind of like in your own weight class. So we... That's kind of like one of the first places we start with the clients, help them position themselves completely differently so that way they stand out from the crowd and they don't. it's not a race to the bottom in terms of price. So that way they can actually charge higher prices. Uh, it's pretty cool, it's backwards, but it's really sweet. Um, and then the back end, this is like systems, um, delivery, right? Like client success, timeline, stuff like that. I'll make a, a, a whole nother video on this as well. Um, and uh, Stay tuned for that. I'll probably make that next week. But nonetheless, um, that's kind of like how I view the offer. So positioning, like the actual pitch itself, like on a sales call, 
how you actually like wrap, like package it all up and kind of easily put it in like an easily digestible format. Um, and then that also kind of helps with selling it too. So it's pretty much just like getting your foundations covered, make sure you got everything dialed in there. Um, another thing as well, I'll, I'll cover this in a minute actually, when we go into uh, some of the key takeaways, I'll break that down. But anyways, we launched kind of two new offers last week and within like two days we did like 30 K. Um, so I'll, I'll go into a little bit more depth in a minute. Um, but that's kind of like the offer component, right? So like have something that's worth, that's worth buying, have something that solves a, a very painful problem. And that's really good at getting people the result that they're paying for. Um, and if you can do that, then you're going to make a lot of money and be really successful. Like for example, um, some of our clients, like one of our clients, Bryce, he helps accountants scale their businesses really damn good at what he does. He has some great results very quickly. And like he started working with us back in January, doing like 3000 a month, six months later right now, the first two weeks of June, he did 80,000 because he's good at what he does. We helped him actually like get his offer dialed in marketing sales as well. Help him hire and train a closer who's closing like 40 to 50 percent and collecting like five to six K cash on calls. Um, so pretty solid there, but uh, yeah, it's really important. And then marketing. So there's a few components I want to hit here. Reputation is a big part of it. So there's this, this concept called like the goodwill bank account that trade talked about. And I find it fascinating because like essentially by providing value, it, it kind of ties together with like the law of reciprocity. The more value you give on the front end, the more likely people are to actually like kind of reciprocate that value and like start working with you. Like for example, a client that I signed up yesterday, he had been following my YouTube videos for a while and he was like, dude, like it just makes sense to work with you. Like, I want to work with you guys specifically. It's very clear, like you're really good at what you do, you know what you're doing, and like I have this problem, I want to get help, I want to do it right. And he signed up, right? But that's because like we've invested a lot of time and energy and focus into building a good reputation, right? So client results is a huge part of that, right? Reputation, word of mouth, goodwill, whatever you want to call it, it's all kind of related there. Um, and we're able to build up this this foundation and just like kind of fill our bank account, and then. Last week, when we decided that we wanted to do a big push, we were able to withdraw from that. And it, it kind of came pretty smoothly, right? So now we have to work on kind of filling it back up as well, uh, which I'll kind of get into in a minute. But um, that's the big component, or that's, that's a big part of it. Uh, the next one is attention and traffic. So identifying bottlenecks in the funnel. Um, when we were at our cabin that we rented in Seattle, an Airbnb, uh, with the four of us, like the guys on the team, we were doing a mastermind session and we were like, okay, where are our bottlenecks right now? And what, what do we need to focus on? The main thing is like, we just need more eyeballs. We've got a hell of a good offer. We're insanely good at selling it. And I think we're closing at least like 40% just very consistently. And we just need more people to sell to, you know? Um, so we're like, okay, how do we get more attention and traffic? So I started, I launched some ads and right now we're turning $1 into $6 and we've been running it for two, about two months. Um, I think we've been spending about 5,000 a month, so nearly 10K. Um, and, and six dollars is on cash collected. Revenue is a little bit higher, um, like that 6X ROAS. But anyways, so that kind of solved, that helps us solve our like attention and traffic problem because now we're helping ourselves, like we're attracting new people into our ecosystem, into our environment. Um, so that kind of like alleviated the main bottleneck in that funnel because like we could do like a hundred grand a month at least just like completely organically because of like the reputation that Trey's built. But nonetheless, like now get into like 300 grand a month, like a million a month, like we do need more traffic. We can get there totally organically. It's just gonna be a lot slower, right? So at the stage that we're at right now, we have that solid foundation organically and now we have the capital coming in to be able to, like reallocate that towards kind of just like feeding the beast even more. Um, so nonetheless, this is kind of like one of the main problems that I see a lot of people struggle with. And like on calls, on sales calls, like that's kind of like the most common problem. It's like people th feel like they have a good offer, they feel like they're good at sales, but they just need more people to sell to, right? They just need to book more calls on calendar. So like <laughs> last Monday, I think we booked like 20 calls. You know, and, and like, check this out. Like, this is this was my calendar last week. 
So it's like taking calls from like eight till six, seven till seven this day. Uh, we took some clients out for dinner and stuff like that. A bunch of clients flew out to Seattle being up with us. But like, look at, look at Thursday. It's like one, two, three. There's a client call, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 sales calls on Thursday. And like the same kind of thing here, right? So it's really important to understand that like, figure out where, what your bottlenecks are and that way you'll be able to actually solve them. And that's what we help a lot of our clients do as well because we all have blind spots. We all have things that we don't really, like if we were aware of them, we'd fix them, you know? So we were able to identify that and now like dumping money into it and it's going incredibly well. Um, and then having a really good setting process. So actually like booking calls, um, taking people through different steps of your funnel as well, right? So like with ads, it's completely cold traffic. So people don't know us. They don't like us, they don't trust us. And it's like completely top of funnel, super cold, and they don't know who we are, or even what we do, right? So then we have to warm them up and kind of nurture them through setting to get them to actually like kind of lower their defenses a little bit and get to kind of like get to know us a little bit. So um, for you right now, I'd say like a big part of it, um, a, like a thing that would be super helpful for you would be like integrating some sort of like warming up or nurturing process um, within your appointment setting process too. So for example, when somebody books a call with us, then our setter's like, hey, like super excited to chat, saw it here. Um, in the meantime, to prepare for the call, check out this video. It will give you some context into like what it looks like to actually like work with us, kind of what we do and, and who we are, because at this point, like you probably have no idea. Um, so this will just kind of help you get a lot of context and help you prepare best for the call. And then they watch it, they come on the call, they're like, oh yeah, I watched that video, and like it was super helpful and it made a lot of sense. So now they're coming in like in our frame, they understand like kind of what we do. So now they're not gonna be like super skeptical or asking just like a million questions and stuff like that um, because we kind of warm them up a little bit. So if you can do most of the selling or as much of the selling in your marketing before the sales call itself, you're gonna save yourself a hell of a lot of time and energy and focus. So there's a little pro tip for you guys. Um, and then that takes us into two sales. So there's kind of two components, right? We've got a warm audience and we're able to withdraw from the Goodwill bank account that I was telling you guys about. Um, so just kind of about like nurturing warm, um, pretty much like building relationships, build trust with people, give a ton of value. And then when you need to withdraw from that, you can because you've spent the time, you've invested the time and energy and focus to build up that bank account that you can now withdraw from. Um, so we were able to do that very well. And then converting cold, this was a whole nother beast. So like with the ads that we're running right now, because people have no idea who we are, like the first like few weeks was, <laughs> we were getting punched in the face. It was like, we'd get on calls with people. They're like, they're like, so what's got you on the call? And they're like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know why I booked the call or why I'm here or who you are or what you guys even do. And I was like, ah, shit, okay. <laughs> yeah, we've got some work to do now, you know? So it's like, it's, it's gonna be pretty tricky to, to close somebody who's 100% cold. Um, it, you can still do it, like I've done that many times now. Um, but it was a process. And the main takeaway here is like, when you try something new, which is like converting cold, because like we haven't really, like, I don't know, we spent a few hundred grand on like VSL and stuff like that. Um, but that was a good process to like warm them up. But with this, it's just such a damn good process. Like the the funnel that we have like with our ads is just so good. Um, and like, it's just so streamlined and everything. So we had to adjust, we had to make a lot of adjustments. And within like a month or two, kind of the first month was like, we were getting kicked in the teeth and dragged through the mud quite a bit because we were just getting beat up and it, it's it kind of sucked not gonna lie but we're like you know what we're gonna give ourselves 90 days to figure this out and we did and now we've got it totally dialed in and now we're helping our like our higher level um sb clients do the same thing and like for example like with one of our clients bryce we launched his ads on sunday he like booked like four calls on monday and i was just talking to him last night too he's experiencing like similar growing pains here so he's just learning from our lessons and uh now he's he's good to go um so yeah, whenever you make new changes, expect there to be a process of adjusting, learning from lessons, and, like getting feedback, and then like going.
going from there and kind of adjusting your sales process. So, um, yeah, like when you're talking to somebody who's like a warm lead versus cold, it's a completely different ball game. Like the guy that I signed up yesterday, it was like a 12 minute sales call. He was like inbound lead. He's like, dude, I've been following you on YouTube for a while. Like it's very clear that like you guys know what you're doing and like it just seems right with you. And like I, I just had an onboarding call with him this morning. We just hopped on one to one and like he's going to be an insane case study. Like I, <laughs> I'm throwing an extra one to one time with myself because I want to make sure we tackled it really like really hard um, right at the gate. And like there's no reason you can't hit like 20, 30 K months in the next like 90 days, like from scratch, total beginner. Uh, we built out his offer together today, and then now he's uh, getting another call next week to really dial that into. But nonetheless, it's going to be a bit of a different process. So, key takeaways set a clear goal that both scares you, but one that you also know that you have the potential to achieve this. So, when we set the goal of like, we're, we're literally kind of joking, we're like half kidding, of like, oh, let's, let's do 100 grand this week, like just for fun, see if, we're, see if we can, right? And then it's very, it was extremely intimidating. We're like, huh, never done that before. Like we, we've done hundred K revenue, but not cash collected. And like this past week we did cash collected. So like hundred grand in the bank, like literally in the pocket, in the business bank account. Um, so it was a whole nother ball game. And anyways, like it, it kind of, it was very intimidating. We're like, shit, we're going to have to do like, like 20,000 a day, like every day. And it was kind of scary, but we also knew like, Hey, like there's no reason why we can't like, why can't we? And like I showed you my calendar there, like that's only the calls that are on my calendar. Like there's probably like three to four hours a day outside of those calls where we were hitting follow-ups, we were sending messages to people, we were like calling people, texting everybody. And like, it, it was insane. Um, and I'll go to go into that in a minute here too. Um, but it was just like, it was, it was scary, but we also knew that we were able to, that we had the potential that we, like it wasn't that far out of reach and we worked our tails off to make it happen. And literally at 9.30 PM on the very last day, I made one last call and he paid the invoice, sent it through, pushed us over, hit hundred K cash. And it was insane. Like we literally hit on the dot. So set a clear goal and you'll be pulled towards it. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of go into that in a minute here as well. But um, one of my one of my favorite quotes, especially for this year, the last six months, um, that's really resonated with me a lot is um, a verse from the Bible. And it's like, where there is no vision, the people perish. So when you don't know what you're aiming for and you're just kind of like beating around the bush, just kind of like kicking tires and, like, oh, it'd be cool to do like 10K this month or 100K this month or whatever. But you don't really have, like, it's not clear. You don't have a clear vision. It's not 100% dialed in. You don't know exactly what you need to do to get there. And you, you don't have help from people who have already done it. Like, you're going to perish. You're not going to hit it, right? But for us, it was like we had a very clear vision. And we said, if we're doing 100 grand, if we do 100K cash collector this week, we're getting matching Rolexes and we're engraving either 100K or internet money on them. And all we could think about any like waking second that we had, we're like, dude, I want rollies. I want a rollie, you know? So it's like, pick, if you want a rollie, if you're tired of being broke, pick up the phone and start dialing. And that was kind of like the, the joke of the week um, because we were all just so like, like drawn towards this goal that we set because it was, A, it was terrifying. It was intimidating as hell. But B, we're like, you know what? If we band together and we actually do it, like if we all put in the effort, we can 100% do it. Sure as shit, we did. Um, and that kind of ties in the next part, like accountability. So having the team, like we were all out in Seattle, the four of us, um, me, Trey, Matt, and Brandon, and we we're all together. That was my first time actually ever meeting them in person. And uh, we've been working together for almost like a year. Um, and it was just super cool to be like in person there. Um, and because we were in person, we had we were able to hold each other accountable. So like if you were kind of screwing off, it was like you're letting down the, the, the other guys. And we were not wanting to do that. Um, so if you don't have a team, like one thing that helped me when I was scaling my agency last year was like have an accountability group. Find other guys that are scaling their agencies or like in, like in our program right now, like in CB, we have a lot of people breaking out into like little mini groups. And like I've set up quite a few of them too. And it's like, hey, 
like meet up every single week. Here's what you guys need to do and hold each other accountable. So that way you're actually making forward progress every single week. And if you show up to the call and you didn't do the things you said you wanted to do last week, you're going to look like a jackass and then you get kicked out of the group, right? So it's, it's important to kind of have that external accountability that leads to like that internal habit and action. Um, and then of course, resourcefulness, urgency, and a breakdown of like where all the, the money came from. So because we had this goal and we had a very clear timeline and we had a very clear hard stop end date, we're like, shit, we gotta do everything we can. You know, it's like, it's not about, another one of my favorite quotes is like, it's not about the, resource, the resources you have at your disposal, it's about how resourceful you can be with what you do have. And it really went to show like, yeah, we've got a lot of resources available, um, but we were extremely resourceful because we probably, like the urgency that this created for us brought us at least like 50 grand. We probably would have done 50K last week just like chilling and like not really doing much to be honest. But we, I can like 100% say with absolute conviction that we generated at least another 50 grand by being extremely resourceful and creating urgency. So for example, like 30,000 of it came from like brand new offers, like a one-time offer kind of upsell to our existing clients. So some of our higher level clients were like, hey, like we'll like launch the ads we're running that, like the, that we're running right now to turn $1 into six. We'll help you set up that whole system. We'll help you optimize it and train you on the setting process to actually just start booking calls. And like literally on day one, spending like a hundred bucks, Bryce booked like three to four calls. Um, so that was, that was one of them. And then another one is just like kind of like a, a very intimate, like little ma like mini mastermind within the community too. So it's for people that already have momentum and kind of doing like around like five to 10 a month, give or take like maybe three to seven. And they want to break through that plateau. Then like we're spending over the next eight weeks, we're getting extremely intimate with them. Like at least two more calls every single week. They're getting a call with our setter who like, People have literally offered us $10,000 for like two hours with our setter. And we're like, no, like his time is extremely valuable and it's better spent actually just setting calls because that's what he's extremely good at. So we kind of threw that in there, um, some extra time with him. And then like, <laughs> I've been taking some sales calls for some of the guys in there, like literally selling their programs. Um, and then like sending them the call recordings, uh, breaking down like call recordings together and stuff like that. So it's, it's insane. Like, if they're not closing 5k paid in fulls by the next, like within the next eight weeks, like I will literally, like <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. Um, and then another thing, so that, there's, that's like 30,000. Another thing that came like, that gave us um, um, another 20,000 was like this thing we call Little Caesars. So from our ads that we're running, when people like booking a call and we're like, hey, dude, like, are you actually free right now? So like, if, we, if like Brandon and I had any white space on our calendar, if we had any free time, if there was no show or anything, like, we're like, dude, like, like we're free right now. We told our setter, it's like, yo, book a call, like, book his calls. And then he's like, dude, like he just messaged the guy, he's like, dude, are you free right now? Um, like one of our guys is, is free for a quick call. And then if they're like, yeah, then we literally hop on right there. They see our ad. And we're on a call with them like five minutes later. So we call it Little Caesars because they're hot and ready. And anyways, we literally closed like 20,000. It was like 15 or 20K from people that like literally just saw our ad, hopped on a call, and then like signed up, paid in full, and joined right then and there. Um, and we literally would have never done this before, and we would not have done that if we didn't have that urgency and if we didn't like need to get resourceful. So another 20k came from follow-ups and follow-ups like to be honest is something that, that we haven't spent too much time on we don't have a very good system i'm actually building out a crm right now to fix that um but anyways we followed up with every freaking person that we could and uh people that we talked to a long time ago and just kind of check checking in touch base and that added up to another 20 and we probably would have left that on the table too um and then not well, 20 I'd, I'd say like maybe 10 to 15 to be honest and then this was a little bit higher too. This was like kind of like 40-ish, 40, 50, something like that um, from like ads and just organic inbound, call to action and stuff like that. So that, there's kind of a breakdown, but really like the majority of it came as a result of us like an extremely resourceful and urgency and creating that opportunity for ourselves rather than just kind of letting it fall into our laps. So because we set that 
award or the reward of getting rollies, it was kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Reward yourself so that way you become pulled towards that goal. Like we're every single thing that we could think about, the only thing we could think about was like, what can I do right now to get me a Rolex? That was it. And like we exercise extreme mental endurance because we knew that there was an end to our suffering. We knew that like once like day seven came around, like it was over and then we kind of go back to our regular scheduled programming. Um, so we were able to do pretty much whatever it took in the meantime up until then to make stuff happen. Um, and then, uh, yeah, push and pull, push and pull effect. One of the tough lessons that we learned that we're learning now this week is like a lot of the stuff that we did kind of took away from the future value of our pipeline. So this was a, a pretty, like, it, it, it's kind of hurting. Um, cause this week's a, a lot slower because we kind of like stole a lot of revenue last week from ourselves for this week and maybe even bleed into next week too because we were like we had that urgency and we're just like like push 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 right and now it's kind of pulling back from us so that's a really important lesson that we learned i just want to be super open and transparent with you guys and uh not try to like say oh yeah we do 100 grand every week right we don't that was our first time and like we learned a really hard lesson this week that because we push 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 now it's pulling back and it's kind of like kind of slapping us in the face a little bit, right? Um, but another thing, one of my favorite concepts, it's like we just sacrifice everything. Like look at my calendar, man, like freaking insane. And you can't see, well, actually I'll pull it over, like even like Saturday, you know? And then I even took calls like the following Sunday. Um, like, and we were in Seattle we all linked up and we didn't, we didn't even go downtown. We didn't even see Seattle. Like we literally did not explore Seattle or go downtown at all because we were working like 12 to 14 hour days every single day. And it was just like, okay, what's more important? Kind of dicking around looking at the city or getting Rolexes and sacrificing short term or the long term. And for us, it was a very easy decision to make. And we don't regret it at all. Like I would do that every single day, every single time. Um, but yeah, it's just like, if you don't sacrifice for the things you want in life then the things you want in life become a sacrifice. If we wanted to enjoy our time, like go explore the city and hang out and stuff like that, like then we would not have hit our goal and got rollies. So pick your poison. Um, and then moving forward, now that we've got an extra 100K in the bank, what are we doing? Well, <laughs> half of that's going towards rollies. No, it's kidding, but kind of. Um, Anyways, uh, we're going to deploy that capital. This was a, a big thing that I took away from Trey as well, just this mentality of like, okay, we've got this cash. Now, how can we make this cash make us way more cash? And anyways, what we've been doing is like, right now we're capped with our ad account because it's brand new at where we can only spend 250 a day, which sucks. And I've been working with Facebook. I'm literally just here and like, I'm, I'm waiting for like one email to say we've increased your limit. Um, but we're going to try and raise that to 5,000 a day. So that way we can just crank things up. We'll probably have to build a sales team as well and hire a few more guys um, to help us like manage that. Um, so if we're turning $1 into six, like let's say we dumped 100,000 into ads, like at this rate, obviously at scale, it'll probably not be one to six. Um, but if let's just say everything the same, like the 100 grand we made, we could turn that into 600,000. Right, and then that six hundred thousand into like three point six mil, and so forth. But obviously, at scale, things change. So, nonetheless, um, ads because, as I mentioned up here, our bottleneck in the funnel right now is not enough people know about us. We need more attention. We need more traffic. Right. So now we're going to use that capital to solve that bottleneck. And then how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use that capital to employ new talent to attract new talent, people who are actually really good at what they do and way better than us to help us do the thing that we're trying to do that they've done many times. And it's like, like yeah, we coach business, like we're business coaches, but like we also hire coaches all the time because we have blind spots too. 
And the only way to get better, the only shortcut in life is to buy knowledge from people who have done what you want to do and who are further ahead than you are. Um, so we're helping people, or we're getting people to help us like really expand that reach and the traffic. And then also like content, doubling down organic. We've hired more people to kind of help us with that. Um, like kind of contract with video editors like for reels and stuff like that too. So um, yeah, really just using that capital to help us like build our pipeline. So that way, like six months from now, like three to $500,000 a month won't be that far out of reach. Like our biggest month so far was I think two months ago, we did like 220,000 cash. Um, so like our next goal is to do 300,000 cash. And what we do today is going to either lead to that or take us away from that, depending on what we do and kind of what actions we take now um, for like three to six months down the road. So I would suggest for you and your business, like figure out what you need to do today to set yourself up three to six months from now to actually be able to hit your goals. And when you can kind of expand your time horizon and look at things like that, it'll really serve you. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I'm going to wrap things up. These were just some of the takeaways. And if you got value, uh, hit the like button. Um, really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot because I'm trying to get more attention. I'm trying to grow the channel and serve a lot more people because we got a damn good offer that gets your clients incredible results. And I just want to make a bigger impact. So if you thought this was helpful, hit the, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button. Follow me over on Instagram too. I document a lot of the stuff a lot closer and kind of get like a behind the scenes look into like the day to day and, and whatnot. Um, Jeremy underscore Pogue, links in the description. And other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.